Hello everyone, we are in server 21 watching a highlight from the stream of them trying to kill their elite necro giants. Stay tuned for two gameplay features. Hello everyone, smash that like, comment and subscribe for more daily Call of Dragons content. And as we are showing on screen, we've got a new live draw feature fully working now for you guys on live stream and these videos. So on screen, what I'm drawing is just some basic premises for a Necro Giant. When you're going against the wall of death, that's where you want to be standing. On screen, quickly, those four balls, you just want to make sure you're moving left to right. We was going over this for everyone on live stream so they had maybe a basic understanding if they've not fought one for the first time but obviously we're going to be able to see the full necro giant fight right here and the really cool thing we're going to be watching right now is their first attempt but this attempt is a really cool one it's going to be four tanks as you can see with the infantry and then every single one else is a cavalry unit and even though i knew the, the outcome before it started since this was something ta and tm already tried and we did make a little fun video on it back in the day in regards to it we're going to see how well they do it's the most fun honestly you can have in this entire raid it's all about movement but you'll realize one of the main features that we're going to touch on obviously as the raid begins so thank you for the oo alliance it does make me a giggle to say a bit of the oo on the videos but these guys were honestly really incredible really fun and honestly they worked with me very well on live stream to get me back in on time when they were setting up both this raid and the second raid that they do later on which is going to be a more archer focused real attempt at this necro giant raid so with all that said let's get into it you can see the infantry units on the right side already tanking the giant making sure it's far away from that necro and immediately you can see all the instant Solan's blades and kingslayers being used by all the cavalry units surrounding this necro giant the amount of damage they do pump out is really good for the first start of this fight you can see they've got a really high dps there doing at least already 625k damage within the 30 second timer but this is where it starts to get a bit crazy and fun and people need to be aware of what's going on so if you're a cavalry unit obviously you're going to be able to not attack anything so that is a really key factor in this raid so the reason why they are picking cavalry and trying it out for the first time is because obviously when you fight the elite raid necro giant there is a behemoth debuff on you that says during these sort of mechanics when that necro giant is invincible if you auto attack it you will take a considerable amount of damage so that's why they're going all carve and trying it as well as there's some really fun mechanics that honestly does require a lot more of the movement speed that you're going to see later on but one key feature that you'll notice that is happening right now on screen is the amount of white damage applying to all those units every so many seconds right now and that's the amount of aoe the necro giant was dealing during one of its skills so now we're in that phase we were talking about the wall of death and this is honestly like playing fall guys one of the funnest parts of this raid but with the cavalry as you can see it is super duper easy you have the superior movement speed so you can dodge this without failure but at the moment as well, they're doing really good. They've got 50 out of 50 still for this raid. So they're at two minutes on the clock, but they're only at 4.3 million health. And that is the key feature here, if you've noticed. The time to DPS, the longer the raid gets, the slower the DPS goes. And that's because right there again a massive aoe slam by that necro giant and the thing is even though you guys playing cavalry are generally tankier compared to the other units you are still taking damage meaning you are not 
hitting at 100% DPS all the way through. So this is where you will see them during certain times actually grab healing stones, which is really cool to watch when they do grab those healing stones and it allows them to obviously get back to max health and try to keep going. So we're at three minutes on the timer and they're on four million health still, that 3.96. So we're gonna round up to four million still. So this is why at the moment, as you can see, cavalry, if you're gonna try it, is not the way to go in this raid at the moment. Maybe in the future, if there's a new you know, build or something that we could run in this season, potentially that might be it. But as of now, you can see cavalry just do not pack the same punch as a marksman unit. And that's something we all know, right? But that's why the cavalry do have that unit advantage against them and why they gain that 1k rage with that cycling ability when they target them in the PvP. So now you can see right now it's going to be a massive cluster mess because there's so much AoE damage here and the healing stone has now dropped. So the sword offs are coming off cooldowns gradually now as you can see. There's a few trickling first and then obviously a little bit more. So everyone's probably going to wait until they get that heal first because if you get the heal that means your damage is going to be amplified as much as possible so then you can deal that damage. But... You can see how long that took. They wasn't able to actually do anything after. So now they're already in one phase and they're only at 3.7 million health. So they've only done 200k health during this uh, phase difference, which was around 45 seconds. So you can see here, this is the main trouble with the cavalry strat it is honestly though the most fun so if you are maybe trying to teach your alliance how to fight this as a you know alliance for for the first time maybe advise everyone to bring cavalry it might sound crazy but if you play cavalry you know you're going to survive most of the raid and it'll teach you how to dodge and what to dodge in this raid so then when you go about it the second time and you have your main actual march there at least you've got the best attempts because you've got a basic understanding so here we go the royal punishments and sword offs all coming off cooldown and there's billions of spikes coming out and that is the sword of soul and ability from the cavalry artifact that is the one that does five aoe hits in pvp if you were wondering while the kingslayer is the one which hits i believe five still but it does a lot less damage but it has that cool execute ability because it has the sick animation of that blade coming down and swiping across. So we're coming towards 5 minutes and 40 now on this timer. And this is where you can see it's going to get a bit too much of a risk. And you can almost say as an alliance, if you chose to call it quits, there would not be any harm. I would, no one would be obviously mad. It would be fair because you can already see they're on 31 members now at six minutes, meaning they've only got two minutes to go before this raid will wipe them out. And they need to do it, I believe, in seven minutes and 30 seconds in order to get that elite raid frame off the top of my head, if we can remember with all the knowledge we know from Call of Dragons so far. So here we go, the ass trying to pump down that DPS into the Necro, but you can see again that Necro doing absurd amount of red AoE hitting multiple units, but that Bakshi is doing something, right? You can see the Bakshi triggers healing that march, allowing them to survive as long as possible, but we're now at six minutes and 40 seconds we're in the dark fire stage and during this stage guys if you were considering about healing if you ever get this stage in my opinion if you can dodge everything else really really well and wait till this stage you should always always heal here this would be the perfect time because you can see right now it forces everyone together so it is perfect for you and if you're obviously a marksman unit you can be positioned as those two tanks are right now creating that nice aoe space and you have a lot of movement to drag left to right left to right to ensure you don't damage the necro giant there is another little secret tip that we're going to showcase during that marksman challenge at the second fire that is going to occur after this stage that is really really unfortunate for the uwu alliance but honestly guys you 
tried your best. As you guys did do in the Tamaris chat, you were working with the power of friendship like the true anime weebs you are. And I honestly love your personalities in chat. You make me giggle when you do pop up. But let's go into the ranged one because the ranged one is a little bit closer it's a lot better of a fight to commentate over as well because you're gonna see as well some of the strategies we outlined right at the beginning with those purple lines if you remember me drawing them if not go back right at the beginning of this video and you can see about those lines of little hints and tips of where to go but with all that said i hope you enjoyed it smash a like comment and subscribe so far to today's video this is halfway through and we've got one more run which is right now So here we are straight into the first, or should we say second run of the day. And this was them running the archers now straight away after the cavalry. Only 20 seconds in and we can already see the amount of DPS difference already. They are dealing with the shadow games they are using, which is the shadow blades artifact. Remember that is the king of marksman units. So right now, here we're going to see the smart boys, and we're going to zoom in as well to showcase it. But a lot of players using the archer marchers to try and dodge, which is fine if you are comfortable in doing it. But you can see right here, we're going to circle him. He's a little sneaky boy, but this spot still works right here. And you can do it a little bit further down. If you look between the rocks, there's another little sneaky Nico in there. But if we look under and perch, they are hidden away and they're not taking any damage from these bottom walls. So it's a very, very cheesy spot that you can do if you're not willing to obviously try and dodge with your marksman. So now we go into the, the fight and everyone retains their damage and goes off onto the Necro Giant. One key thing with this raid, if you never noticed it so far, every single phase that happens when it finishes, the Giant and Necro Giant will switch spots. So right now you can see the Necro Giant is on the right side. So after this next effect that the Necro Giant might spawn, you're going to need to be positioned on the left side. And that's going to allow you to consistently hit that DPS without worry. But right now we've got a really interesting mechanic. This is the balls. Again, you're going to see what we advised at the top. Go, go into these walls and move left, right, left, right. And if you do it correctly, you should be dodging someone. But right there, Jay gets absolutely killed by that ball. Not tracking it correctly right there. But we can see how difficult this is compared to the cavalry. But all we need to do as the arrows show, move left, move right. You just need to make sure your march is in the gap and you will not die like the J guy did. So we've got 12 units dead already in this raid. But you can already see that at 3.7 million health. And that is in 2 minutes 40 compared to the cavalry. So you can already see a massive, massive increase and one thing they did here which we did outline live is a little bit of an error on their part but we can understand it they grabbed that healing stone and they grabbed that healing stone to obviously heal up to deal as much damage in this window however by doing that what they did do to themselves were obviously reduced the amount of damage they dealt because obviously that is maybe 10 to 12 seconds of all your alliance members gathering to get the stone so right here is actually a really good stone pick. They do get hit a couple of members here by the ball, but they commit to the heal. And what this does is actually allow them to tank through the hit, heal all the way back up to max health and go into the DPS phase straight away. So right here is the little tip that I've waited as well all the way into this middle of the fight. If you noticed right there, if you want to just jump back maybe 10 seconds, you would have noticed you do not take any damage if you let your marksman unit attack the giant and this is a very key aspect of this raid if you're not willing to move left right left right and make sure you are targeting the giant because if you notice no one were taking damage when they were targeting the giant but 
when they target Necro Giant, that's when the debuff was applied to them. So again, you're going to see it being hit. Anyone targeting that Necro Giant right here is taking considerable amounts of damage. Plus, they need to get out of the purple right here. And right there, they had a really good position right now where they are on screen, where they had that nice almost figure of eight of the circle. It allows them to move left, right, and left, right. But as you notice, these guys here are also targeting the giant like I just said and by targeting the giant they're not targeted the necro which won't deal any damage back but you can see here they did listen live and as really good teamwork adjusted and opened up that gap perfectly when they were doing their live attempt so we can see them going back into the DPS phase five minutes on the clock meaning two minutes is left but we are now at only 2.8 million. We're under the 50% the mark. And this is key right here. You can see the time and damage difference between the cavalry and the marksman here being showcased by the Ubu Alliance, which was, I believe, if I can remember rightly, on either server 21 or he was on server 24. So I do apologize if I mixed it up. We were bouncing around a lot during that phase. But... Here was the catastrophe, the dark fire came and they didn't recognize the circle prompts on the tanks quick enough, which did come and kill at least 10 members there. So there's only 17 DPSs left, which is obviously an upset track chart in the center there with only 2.5 million DPS to go, one minute 13 on the clock. They obviously know this was not the run for them. However, it was a much better attempt compared to the cavalry units and for you guys the viewers because you can now see two side by side raids by the same alliance in two different tactics being run and guided by myself and shoutcasted all the way to the end so you can now understand hopefully what to do in this raid so if you enjoyed today's video as this thing is closing out smash a like comment and subscribe to the channel i'm here every single day giving you call of dragons content i live stream as well on mondays wednesdays and fridays for all of you guys and we try and bounce around all the servers too if you are obviously maybe at war or doing something while we are online so check it out we're always there to help you and support you in chat. But thank you again, Uru, the alliance that allowed us in and helped basically orchestrate the timings to record this for their elite necro giant frame attempt to try and get but unlucky for this attempt. But hopefully next time you can conquer that big boy necro giant and get that amazing frame. But until the next video, stay safe, stay sneaky, and Peace out, everyone.